Okay, so this this green path you see here is easy only for linear systems. So the previous, the last discussion we were having before the break was uh, to make you realize that. So if you take this path through the Laplace transformation, you end up with an algebraic equation for a linear system. If you have a nonlinear system, then going through this path is uh, just as difficult as going through this path. So there's no point in going uh, through the Laplace transformation in general for nonlinear systems. So, uh, so this path we take um, is beneficial for linear systems. And if you have a linear system, then Uh, so for any linear system you can imagine, in the most general case, you will have a transfer function that can be presented in this form. Okay, so you will have a ratio of two polynomials of s that gives you the transfer function of that system, and to calculate the response of such a system to an input applied, you need to take the input signal, transform it. Uh, into S domain through Laplace transformation, multiply it with the transfer function, and you will get the response in S domain. Okay? Um, now I would like to go back and uh, talk about this control actuation system example. So remember, uh, when modeling the physical systems, we talked about mechanical systems and electrical systems, and then uh, we model a DC motor, and then we talked about this control actuation system where a DC, an electric motor was used to drive uh, the control surface of an aircraft. So let's see, we had these equations for that. So this was the equation for the electrical part. So this was the equation for the electrical part. So now let's take the Laplace transformation of that equation. So V is the voltage that is the input to this circuit. So the transform of that is just V of S. Minus R times, this is the resistor. I is the current. So let me take Laplace transform of that. That becomes capital I of S. Minus L times uh, the derivative of I. So instead I will just write S times capital I. Um, here let me just say that here we assume zero initial conditions. Okay, and now I have minus KB times omega M. This is the <coughs> rotational speed of the motor. And instead of that, we can put that term here. One over N. N was the gear ratio times uh, D theta or DT. And instead, let me put S times theta. So this is theta of S. Is equal to zero. Uh, so I can modif uh, modify this equation a little bit to get, so let me collect the I terms. I have LS plus R times capital I. Is equal to V of S 
minus KB divided by N times S times theta of S, right? Or I can write I of S one over L S plus R times V of S minus KB times S divided by N times theta of S. So this was the first equation. And the second equation was this one. Um, now I take Laplace transform of this equation. The first term is Ki times capital I of S minus this is the log torque and that's a disturbance input, so I, I don't know what this is. I just take the transform of S and call it TL of S. And on the right hand side, I have this I, and this I represents the moment of inertia, right? So I should not confuse this with the current, so let me call that J instead. So let this be J times the second derivative of theta, which is S squared times theta of S. Um, that's it. Okay, now I have these two equations. These are algebraic equations now. So capital I of S. And then I have this second equation. Uh, to so and I want to, this is my output, right? I'm interested in the position of my control surface, which is theta. So I want to find out theta, what happens to it when I apply a voltage to it, right? And to be able to do that, I need to solve for these two algebraic equations. Um, so let me just say that this is my equation one. This is my equation two. So this is simple enough. Uh, so this is very easy compared to solving differential equations, right? So I just, I have I of S here. So I can just take this and insert it into the second equation. So I have Ki times I of S, and this is I of S. I just need to multiply it with Ki, so I just need to put I here and then put another minus TL of S is equal to J S squared times theta of S and I can collect the theta S terms together so if I uh, J S squared plus KB KIS divided by N LS plus R that is and I have on the other side KI divided by LS plus R times V of S minus TL of S open form directly n times j times l times s to the power 3 
plus n times j times r s squared plus kb times ki times s divided by Okay, so for this system, we, the input was V of S. And this CL was a disturbance input. So let me show that here as well, this was CL. And the output is theta. So if we assume that we can write the transfer function of the system from voltage input uh, to deflection angle. Okay, so hopefully I didn't make any mistakes and this should be the transfer function. So I can write Okay, so this is the transfer function for that system. And as always, it is a rational transfer, rational, complex rational function. Okay, so we have, this time the denominator is third order, but there's no constant term, which means I can take this into S parentheses, and that gives me S times the second order polynomial. Okay, so since this is a third order, um, the denominator is a third order polynomial, it should have three poles. The first one is s is equal to zero. s is equal to zero makes the denominator zero. And then there should be two other poles, and those should be the roots of this uh, polynomial, right? Okay, so here we had two coupled equations. We had uh, this differential equation for the current flowing in the circuit, in the motor. And then we have a second order equation for the mechanical part. Normally, we would have to solve for these differential equations simultaneously to obtain the answer. But once we took the Laplace transformation, everything got really very easy. So we just had to solve for two algebraic equations, and from there we easily obtained the transfer function between the voltage applied and the 
deflection angle of the contour surface as this relation. Okay? Okay, now uh, let's take another example. For some reason, I cannot open that file. So where is it? I'm looking for that example we did before. Okay, so I was looking for this example. So remember this example we did before. It's for this system. We have an electric motor driving uh, a spring mass system. And for that we had these three differential equations at the end. Okay, so now let's so let's consider the example. So the equations for that were these three equations. Uh, so what we do is the same, right? So I don't want to go through it. This one is quite lengthy, but still, the solution is quite straightforward. You know what to do, right? It's not like uh, solving the differential equations. You know, you don't have to worry about taking complex integrals or uh, anything like that. So you just take the transformation of these equations one at a time. So let me ex just explain how you can do it. All the three equations above. Assuming zero initial conditions. Then solve for So if your output is the position of the mass, then you should solve for y of s. If you you can solve for that other output. So as I said before, output uh, is something you choose. It's not unique. So for the same system, you can diff consider different variables as your output. Okay, so let's start doing that. And is equal to minus R times the Laplace transform of I, then KB times theta dot. KB times S times theta of S. 
plus V, which is my input, so I just put P of S. Uh, for the second equation, I have... Um, so before I proceed to the second equation, so for the first equation, I can modify it a little bit to... I collect the I terms. Okay, so let's move on to the second equation. Let me just put it here so that I don't have to scroll up and down. Uh, so J S squared times theta of S is equal to K I times I of S. Uh, minus R times K2 times R times theta of S minus K2 times capital Y of S plus B2 times R times uh, S times theta of S minus B2 times kept to y of s uh, so let's modify this equation a little bit so that we have similar terms collected together so let me collect head of s term on the left j s squared plus I have a theta here so there should be or let me see, I have this one, plus B2 times R times S times theta of S, so that was that term, and I have another term here, that is also plus R squared times K2, so these are the theta terms. I have the current term, Ki times I of S, and then I have Y terms, right? Um, plus I think I made a mistake here so this should be S times capital Y of S and I forgot to put that S here This is my second equation, this, is my, this was my first equation. And then I have this last equation, so let's... Okay, now I'm taking the transform of this last equation here. Uh, I have m times s squared times capital Y of s is equal to
Now I can remove this. Uh, so let me also collect the similar terms. ms squared plus I have minus B2S on the other side and then minus B1S so I can combine those two terms into one term as B1 plus B2 times S plus I can combine this minus K2 and minus K1 terms as K1 plus K2 times capital Y of S and that's equal to B2RS plus so that was for that term plus K2R times theta of S and that's it right I have everything taken into account and this is my Okay, so as I said, the result gets quite messy. Uh, it's get quite crowded. Mm -hmm. Should you know? Doro, har. Should I roll Jack? There should be an R here. Do I that? So from here we can insert I of S from equation one into. equation 2 then we get theta of s from equation 2 and put it into 3 finally we get the transfer function from uh, v of s from the input v of s to output y of s okay uh, so it gets quite crowded but again it's uh, even though it's a little bit uh, tedious it's not difficult okay it's just straightforward you just get one term and then put it into another and then get that from that equation put it into the next term and then you obtain the transfer function okay any questions uh, so you the result looks like uh, y of s is equal to some rather a large function of s, let me call it g of s times the v of s and the g of s here is the transfer function and if I ask you to find the response of the system when we apply a step input to this system then instead of v of s you will write the Laplace transform of the step input which is 1 over s and get the result and if the input is a different function then you need to calculate v of s for that input function and then put it there multiply them together and that gives you the response okay okay so um, also in the end if you have a linear system the transfer function becomes a complex rational function and then you multiply it with some input and this depends on the type of input you're applying but it's another function of s and the response is obtained in the form of 
a rational function of S. Okay, so the, uh, the we obtain the system response uh, like that, and to find the actual response in time domain, we need to take the inverse transform of that function. Okay, so whatever this y of S function is, you need to take the inverse transform of that function to find the actual response. So that is what we will be doing next. Um, but I don't want to start that today. So I'm going to stop here. And uh, starting from tomorrow, we will be talking about how to go back to time domain from that response in S domain. Okay? Uh, if you don't have any questions, then let me stop here and I will see you tomorrow. <laughs>